Okay, so in this video, I am going to um, prepare a simple extended trial balance in Excel with no adjustments and uh, finish it off by transferring the net profits to the capital section, which will um, complete the extended trial balance. So firstly, I've got an extended trial balance, which I've just set up. And you can follow my example. I'm working off the extended trial balance task uh, 9.0. Um, I've set it up. I've already got my um, uh, total rows calculating each of the um, columns. And I have set it up uh, with the sort of the description of what needs to go into each of the columns as well. Um, so now, um, the next step, or the first step, would be to transfer each of the items from the trial balance into the profit and loss account or the balance sheet wherever they belong, and of course into the right section. So the first tri trick which makes things a lot easier is that when you transfer an item, for example, the first item, opening stock, which is a debit balance, it must go to another debit balance. In other words, it should either go to the profit and loss account here or to the balance sheet here. Okay. The same thing with sales. Um, sales, which has got a credit balance, must either go to the profit and loss account with a credit or to the balance sheet with a credit. Um, and that's actually where all of uh, what we've set up in the top here is going to make life a lot easier. Um, stock, the opening stock, is actually probably the hardest one of all of the items to remove. But we know it's a debit balance, so it either goes into the profit and loss account where we put costs and expenses, or where we put the balance sheet, where we put drawings and assets. So, um, stock or opening stock, if we just go into our example in here, we can actually see that opening stock is under the cost of goods sold. Um, so it's in our profit and loss account. In other words, stock is a cost. So we take this item and we literally, so we need to put it into the profit and loss account because it's a debit balance. It must go into this debit. It's the cost item, in other words. So 1,844. Sales is our income item. It, go, it belongs to the profit and loss account and we can see it's a credit balance so it goes in here on the credit and it holds true. We can see we already called it income here so that works as well. Uh, purchases 66,560 is a debit balance. Where does purchases belong? Well purchases is again it's a cost uh, so it belongs to the profit and loss account and it certainly is not a drawing nor is it an asset. So 66,560. Uh, rent received is effectively an income to the business. We are earning rent um, from probably renting out some premises. So it's an income. So it goes in and we can see it's credit. So it works with our income here on the credit side. So we put it in here. Staff cost, admin cost, interest paid rent, and distribution costs are all expenses to the business. In other words, so expenses up here, it belongs to the profit and loss account. So we're going to take all of this and we're going to put it into the profit and loss account. Office fittings um, and motor vehicles are all assets. They're all things that the business owns. And we can see they got debit balances. Uh, asset has got debit balances. So it's definitely an asset. In other words, we're going into the um, balance sheet. And office fitting, so the provision for depreciation, we can see provisions is over on this side here. So we know we've got to put it in here. Again, it's a reduction. Office fittings depreciation, provision for depreciation is a reduction in the value of our office fittings. So they would go in on, on this side here under provisions. Again, just to confirm, we can see we've got a credit value. So these two items are credit values. So it makes sense they go under credit here, under our provisions. Oh, and I automatically just moved uh, by mistake here loans. Um, but let's have a look. Loans have got a credit balance. 
Loans is a financial obligation to the business. It's a therefore it's a liability. It's something that the business owes. So it's got a credit value, and so it's either here in the profit and loss account or the balance sheet. But as it's something the business owes, it's a liability. So it actually so I ended up putting it by mistake in the right place. Capital is the same thing again. Capital, we can see we've noted the capital should go up here under the credit column. And again, it is has a credit value, so that works as well. Um, debtors, bank, cash are effectively all uh, current assets. It's things that the business owns in the short term, something that's easy to turn into cash. Um, so we are going to something that the business owns is a business assets so um, we can see they all got a debit value and over here they've um, in where we got our assets they've got a debit value as well so it makes sense to put them in there drawings um, is a reduction there's the money the owner takes out for his own personal use so it's a reduction in our capital um, and we can see here we already list the drawings up here, so that's nice and simple. Simply put it here, debit to debit. Creditors is a financial obligation to pay your suppliers. In other words, it's a liability. We can see it's got a credit column, also a credit value here. Liabilities have also got a credit value, so put it in here. Um, tax. So uh, it's actually supposed to say VAT, the VAT liability. Um, it's got a credit uh, value. Um, again, it's a liability, something that the business has to pay. So we're going to put that in under our liability section here. So again, a credit to a credit. Now, uh, so this is where we are now. We've transferred each of the items um, that we need to do. Um, the only thing is that we have got one step left, and that is to calculate the net profit um, and to transfer that net profit. Um, if we go back in and look at one of the examples of creating a profit and loss account on a balance sheet, one of the last steps you do, not the, maybe not the last, but one of the last steps is you calculate net profit down here, and you then take that net profit and you simply just take that value and you put it into the profit and loss account in here under the capital. And the way it then works out is you can then cal calculate capital by saying the original capital in the beginning of the year plus any net profit that has been uh, earned this uh, year, so that's what we took and put over here, um, minus any drawings, and that will give us um, our new or our capital in the end of the year effectively. Um, so we need to do the same step. Um, so, profit and loss. So in here we need to calculate the uh, net profit. Well, what, what is net profit? Let's imagine we got um, income on this side. And let's imagine we have got expenses on this side. Let's imagine that we in our business we've got a £60 income and we have got £40 expenses. What is the net profit for this business? Well, the net profit is effectively £60 or income minus expenses. In other words, the, exp um, the income in this example is £20. Um, so we have got income on this side. we got expenses on this side. So what we're going to do um, is a little bit like ca um, calculating um, the balance of the profit and loss account. We are going to calculate the net profit and the net profit is going to be the difference between our income which is on this side here so effectively our total income is this number here 125,432 it's comprised of our sales and our rent received all income items and we're going to subtract all of our expenses so that's all cost and expenses that is so that's all of these items here which are totaled up down here so our net profit can be calculated by saying our income minus our net profit. So I'm going to do that down here. In Excel, you can do that very simply by uh, writing in this cell. Um, click on the keyboard equal to. And then we left click on the income minus. 
Um, so click minus in the keypad. The expense item, so left click on the expense item and click enter. So that gives you 5,699. Um, that item here, we are going to put in to our net profit and loss um, in here. So 5699. Note one thing though. If, um, uh, if you actually try and do the calculation in here, so this minus that, it's not going to work. You can't do it. Or even if I sort of deleted this one here, you will not be able to do it. It won't work in Excel. So this item minus this item. It's not going to work. So we have to do this calculation down here and just fill it out. So income minus expenses, 5699. We put it here. And what we've effectively done now is a new transaction. We've done a debit here. So whenever you do a new transaction, you have to do a double entry. So if we do a debit, we need to do a credit. And the credit, we're going to do over in the balance sheet. So we've got credit here. And it, because it's double entry, it's got to be the same value. So we write in here 5699. Um, and that sort of completes the double entry. Now, note this. Um, having done this one transaction here, what we have effectively done is we have calculated the net profit and we have moved it in to the capital section. Notice the capital is part of the balance sheet on this section here. So we have taken the net profit, calculated it and moved it into the capital section, capital up here, which is exactly the same thing as calculating profit here and moving into the capital section here. Exactly the same thing. Notice another thing. And that's really important as well. When we have done this, what the impact was on the total row is that the profit and loss account uh, section balances, the two values are the same. And in the balance sheet, uh, doing it as well, uh, or transferring this, this profit into here, meant that the balance sheets debit and credit column balances. And that is really important because you know you have done this right when your balance sheet section, so debit and credit balances, the profit and loss account section, debit and credit balances, we got our trial balance balances and the adjustment column, which we haven't used yet, balances as well. Each of the individual sections, debit and credit columns has to balance, has to be the same for you to have done it correct. But that is exactly what has happened here. So in this video, I've demonstrated how to transfer each of the items to the correct sections. We saw that when you had a debit value, it has to be put into a corresponding debit value. When you got a credit value, it has to be put into a corresponding credit value. Um, we calculated net profit, um, which was the difference between the credit uh, and the debit side. And we transferred that net profit into the balance sheet. Um, and in doing so, the balance sheet balanced, the debit and credit um, uh, columns balanced, and so did the profit and loss account balance um, uh, section balance.